Toyota has just introduced their subscription services. And I thought, you know what, maybe there's some compelling stuff here, some super compelling stuff that you would really want to pay $15 a month for. But uh, there's not. In fact, pretty much all of it is standard on most of the competition's products. So this is Toyota's strategy. Let's have a look. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you tuning in. Great to have you subscribing to the channel. Really, really exciting times right now. The car and automotive industry is just, it's just motoring ahead. You know what? On all these, you know, these gasoline powered automotive sites, look at all the articles now with comments on them. All the articles now, I mean, nine out of 10, 90% of the articles with, you know, 50, 100 comments on them are just EV articles. People have just lost interest in gasoline powered vehicles, as I personally did. That was my personal journey many years ago. It's just a right into gasoline powered cars, and I'd always be wanting to read about what was the newest, greatest, latest product. You know what? Nothing really changed very much for many years, and suddenly EVs came out. Tesla started innovating, making EVs, and I was like, wow, these uh, vehicles are changing and these things are amazing. Things are happening at an incredible speed. That's what's so exciting about having this channel, you know, being able to make videos and this constant news, constant improvements in energy density, new types of batteries, new types of technology being invented. This stuff wasn't happening in the automotive industry before, to be honest, before Tesla came along. There was very little going on. It was like, oh, we spent six billion this year on new engines, and there's a two percent improvement in efficiency. And then you know, the the journalists would go and test the cars, and they'd be like, oh, we can't tell the difference versus the the previous model. And they just spent six billion dollars inventing this great new engine technology, stop start, which ends up ruining your car's engine. Anyhow, the point is, EVs are the future. EVs are the smartphones, right? And gasoline powered cars. They're about to be dead. Sorry if you don't like that, but it's happening. Toyota, they're pretty much old hat, in my view. They they haven't kept up. They are the Nokia of today. They just don't realize it yet. They're still in denial. And now they're saying, well, you know what? Our, our sales are going down in... Uh, the US, in China, in Europe. Sure, you Wazzies that watch the channel, you're going to be saying, oh, what are you talking about, Electric Viking? Australians love Toyota. We love Toyotas here, mate. What do you mean? Yeah, Australians do. But remember, there's only 24 million people here in Australia. It's really an irrelevant country on the global scheme. So many Australians I talk with about this th seem to think that we matter. Australia does not matter. 24 million people out of a global marketplace of, what, 7 billion. It's a drop in the ocean, this little country. No one cares if people buy Toyota vehicles in Australia. You know what they care about? They care about the three biggest car markets in the world. What are they? Not Japan, not Australia, China, Europe, and North America. By far the three biggest car markets in the world. Toyota in those markets this year is, in fact, losing market share. What are they doing? They're like, oh, well, we'll bring in some subscription fees. That'll bump up our profits. Even if we sell less cars, doesn't matter. We'll get people in. We'll be like the Netflix, right? We'll be like Netflix. We'll, pe we'll get people in subscribing. They're going to pay all this, all this money. And then Toyota's like, well, what are we going to give them for these subscriptions? Um, uh, connected services. Connected services. That's it. We'll enable people to... Um, uh, turn on their engines remotely. Um, what else can you do? We'll let them look at the app and on the app, we'll show them some stuff. Um, what will we show them? Uh, how much fuel is in their car? Uh, their odometer reading, their distance to empty, whether their doors are locked or unlocked, or whether their windows are open or closed. But um, Mr. Toyota, isn't this stuff that people already know about? Yeah, yeah, but if we put it on an app, we can charge for it. So Toyota's going to charge you 10 bucks a month for absolutely nothing. It's, it's honestly, it's hysterical. It's laughable. If you look at what they're offering, there's nothing here that's compelling. Not in the least. Now, some of you are probably saying, hey, hang on a minute, Electric Viking. Toyota makes a lot of money. And you have a good point to make. But remember, they're actually also the most indebted company on the face of the earth. As in, there is no company, no business in existence 
in history ever before, ever before now, who has as much debt as Toyota does. And the thing is, this is what they sell. So what are they going to do? How are they going to continue to pay off all those debt loans? Well, they need to continue making enormous profits. Of course, they can't continue to do that by selling gasoline powered vehicles forever. So subscription is the next frontier. Now you're probably thinking, well, Volkswagen, they're the second most indebted company on the face of the earth, but they have a financial services division. So they actually make quite a bit of money from their financial services. Toyota, on the other hand, does, well, they do too, but it doesn't make up a very large percentage of their revenue. More than 90% of Toyota's revenue comes straight from automotive sales. That's it. They are solely reliant on that. About 9%, or in fact, a bit less than that, about 8% of their revenue comes from financial services and other business operations, kind of a complex gamut of different services. Really, Toyota is fundamentally reliant on automotive sales, making margins on those sales. Now, as of October 2022, Toyota's financial services division only represents 7.8% of the company. Clearly, they want to increase that significantly. Clearly, they have to increase that significantly. So they're giving you three subscription options. The first option will give you an automatic emergency collision notification. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Vehicle insights to a Toyota app, including fuel level, odometer reading, distance to empty, whether the doors are locked or unlocked, and whether windows are open or closed. Now, if you want to pay extra, you can get the mid-tier package called Toyota Connect Plus. You this The mid-tier package comes with a stolen vehicle tracker remote locking and unlocking of doors and boot, remote engine start, remote climate control system, notification settings for when the vehicle is used by other drivers, access to details of recent trips and vehicle location. So, you know, if you want to check if you want to check up on your wife, see where she is or your husband, or your partner, you can you can secretly track them using the Toyota app and if they don't know about the app, they're not going to know that you're tracking them. There you go. What a great feature. The top shelf package called Toyota Connected Multimedia adds the following extras above and beyond the previously mentioned packs for $12.50 a month. Connected navigation. So if you want navigation, you got to pay $12.50 a month in your Toyota. What a deal. What a deal. What a deal. Guys, go out and buy one straight away. That's what I recommend. As you can see, um, this is all very tongue in cheek. Uh, and you, However, I should point out, that's one of four features you get. You also get a connected voice assistant activated by saying, hey, Toyota. Now, in a Mercedes, that's standard. You don't have to pay for hey, Mercedes, or you know, I don't know if anyone uses that feature, but the thing is, right, realistically, do people want to pay for that? Let me know if you're going to pay, if you want to pay to talk to your Toyota vehicle to say, hey, Toyota. Were you willing to pay $12.50 a month for that feature? Third, connected trip, providing start and finish navigation to and from your vehicle. And fourth, multimedia profiles, adding navigation and trip settings for up to three drivers. Toyota, Toyota's Vice President of Sales here in Australia, Marketing and Franchise Operations, Sean Hanley, claims connected services are designed to provide an even better driving experience with an array of technologies focused on making ownership even easier, safer, and more enjoyable. Beyond this, seven models are already equipped with an initial release of selected Toyota connected services including the Toyota Camry, Hilux, Land Cruiser 300, Fortuna, Yaris Cross, Hiace, and Grand Via. Charging a subscription for remote lock and unlock and climate control? Yeah, those things are free with a Mercedes, BMW, multiple cars with a Tesla, you get that stuff for free. I mean, Toyota is meant to be this affordable car company and they're charging subscription rates for things that are standard on half the vehicles you can already buy now. I don't understand how this will work for them in the future. I don't understand this business model. Surely customers are going to go, oh, hang on a minute, but it's free from everyone else. Why are we paying for this? I should point out though, with your BMW, your Audi and your Mercedes, you can get these subscription, you can get these sorts of features, right? Well, you can get them for free, but it is only for a complimentary subscription term, depending on the country that you're in. So other companies are trying to do this as well. 
But it is interesting to when you read about the other companies that are doing this. One of them is BMW. Another one is Mercedes, right? Right now, I think if you look at the sales numbers, you'll see that Tesla is definitely taking sales away from those car companies. For example, in Germany, Tesla's sales in the month of September were only about 5% less than BMW's. In Germany, now obviously Tesla has already well and truly usurped BMW in the United States. Now, I don't think these kinds of strategies to charge subscription fees for things that should be standard and will be in many other competitors' vehicles is a good long-term strategy. Now, connected navigation. That seems to be a common theme with these subscription packages Toyota's offering. So what actually is it? Well, it's internet-based live traffic updates and info like what you get with Apple Maps and Google Maps, which you get now for free from Apple and Google. Why would people be wanting to pay Toyota for that? I don't get it. What am I missing? I'm clearly missing something. I mean, I cannot understand. Why not just use Apple Maps or, you know, why not use Google Maps using your car infotainment screen as everyone does that doesn't have a Tesla, then they use the Tesla variant. I don't understand. I'm clearly missing something. Please let me know what I'm missing in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.